All right, this is how I edit um, some of my pictures. So first I'm going to open up Photoshop and I have the Adobe Photoshop CS5 version. All right, so that's open and now I'm going to go grab the picture I want to show you how I edited. There we go. Now these are the originals. I didn't edit them within this app, um, but I did edit them and then save them on my computer desktop. So let's find the picture of you and Nate that you wanted to know how I edited. Not sure if there's a specific one you're talking about. Let's see. So these again are straight from my camera. Let's do this one and this one because that one's a more close up and that one's more farther away. So I don't need iPhoto anymore. Just helps me organize all my photos. So I'll quit out of that, open up my Photoshop, file open. I like to move whichever pictures I'm working with onto my desktop. It just makes it easier to find. All right. All right. So this is the first picture that we're going to edit. And um, sorry. There we go. Um, this is a blending tool. It's used for getting rid of wrinkles or imperfect, like bellish, and sorry, imperfections like blemishes or different things like that. And I use this a lot. There's a lot of different options, but I usually just stick with this top one here. You can change the size up here. Um, I usually don't touch the hardness, and you can change the spacing. I uh, usually mostly just mess with the size, I don't touch anything else. Um, so click off to the side, and sometimes I will zoom in on the close-ups, and then I'll make this smaller or bigger, 
depending on how big of the imperfection I want to get rid of. And there you go. And then I'll just work away. Usually the rule is to never touch this line underneath the eyes. But you can get the lines off to the side of the eyes. That's not a problem. And I can always go up here and do the undo if something doesn't look natural. Because that's where we really just want to keep everything looking pretty natural. Alright. Um, I really don't see imperfections on you guys. Another trick that you guys don't necessarily need, but I have learned to take advantage of whenever editing everybody really likes, um, is this. So before I just start doing it, um, this is a dodging tool and this is a burning tool. If something in the picture is too dark, you would use a dodging, dodging tool to lighten it up just a certain area or a certain object. If something was too bright, you could burn the area. Um, and these are basically talking about referencing uh, if I was to actually be in the dark room and using my hands to uh, make something lighter or darker. You would use tools that look like these to do so uh, in the dark room. Anyway, so we're going to take the dodge tool. We'll come up here and people really like They'll always ask me if I can lighten their teeth. So, just lightening up your teeth a little bit. See if that looks natural. So that might be a little bit too much, but you can always go back at it, step backwards, really play with it. Um, another thing that you need to do when you're using this tool is to come up here and you can change the sizeness and the hardness. The hardness will change how much it blends, or sorry, how much it lightens. If you don't want it to lighten too much, you can make it dimmer. If you want to make it a significant brightness or change, you can go all the way up here. I like it around here. Um, when you're using this tool, you don't want to use this because this will make obvious circles. See how that has a sharp edge? So I'm going to go back and do this. Um, you always want to use something that has this blending around it because it'll make the general area, it'll blend things just a whole lot better. So I'll do that. All right. So now what I'm going to do, because this picture is really beautiful, but it's just not as crisp as I'd like it to be, I'm going to come up here to this filter spot, and what I will use is the Sharpen, and I usually use a Smart Sharp Sharpen. And you can zoom out to see if it's really um, doing exactly what you want. You don't want it to look grainy. Sometimes it can if you're doing too much. I think that looks like a big difference and I really like the way that that looks so we're going to keep it here my settings that I have it on the amount of 11 and a radius of 1.5 that's the radius of the pixels how they're being sharpened and then the amount that they're being sharpened so um, that's just what I found is the best for my pictures so I press OK and there you go usually we'll take a little minute maybe to do all that. Um, there's spots that you still want to get with this. You come back. Now sometimes if you do certain layers over other layers, it won't let you, it won't edit what you're trying to do to it, if that makes any sense. So say you're trying to change the contrast after doing a smart feature or smart filter. It won't let you. Um, I don't, it won't. It won't do the function that you're asking it to do, because of the layer that you did previously. Uh, and if that's the case, usually you'll start off in Essentials here. You'll need to move the designs, and click on this background, and then you can do whatever you want. 
Um, but since that's not the case right now, just giving you a heads up. I'm just resizing this so I can get a general idea of the whole picture as I come in here to play with this a little bit. I like my pictures lighter. I just feel like it naturally gets rid of a lot of imperfections and I can add the contrast and whatnot to it later. Uh, add just a little bit of contrast and it, you can always go back and change it if you feel like that's too bright later. I like this vibrance feature. I mean this is it 100% non 100%. Obviously you don't want to get too crazy with it. I'll bring a little bit of warmth into the picture by changing the saturation. Again, you don't want to do too much, but enough to give you guys some pigment back into this after you whitewashed it a little bit with the brightness. Um, so yeah, those are the main features that I usually use. If you wanted to, you could go into this filter here. And there's all these different filters. If you feel like something's too red, you could cool it down. If it feels like it's too blue or too cold, you could warm it up. And there's tons of different filters here. I mean, we could make you guys purple. You could take all the filters off. You could take your Wonder Water. Um, but yeah, I usually don't use this too often. Um, this will really let you relegate or delegate, you know, what, if you want the greens or, I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Just let you really balance it if you don't want to use a filter. Kind of a filter by hand kind of thing. But you can really play with a lot of these. Again, if you wanted to use this by hand instead of use a filter, you could do that. I'm going to put this back to zero. Um, this is another spot where you can really use play with the saturation. Obviously no saturation would be black and white, but there you go. This will also do the darkness and the lightness, but it's just in a more fading effect. this back to zero because we already got it perfect. Alright. I mean there's so many different other things you could do. Another thing that I love to do is come up here to filters um, and I'll go to filter blur. I'll do smart blur even though I just did sharpen. Um, and this is used by different editors to give people the appearance of being airbrushed. Sometimes this preview will take a long time. I already like the setting pretty much that I have it on, so I'm not too worried about it. So I'll press OK. And there you go. Kind of just gives you guys that airbrushed feature. It's just small editing that makes it really come together. Um, and then for saving out of Photoshop, you need to do Save As. I usually save it to the desktop again. And, or a different folder, different thing, whatever I want to save it into. Um, but you need to change the Photoshop to JPEG because the Photoshop will take up way too much. You'll know this is the edited one because it'll say copy it afterwards. And you save it. Okay. Don't mind trimming babbling in the background. And then when you exit out of here, you don't need to save. And then this photo, we're using this tool again. It's getting rid of small imperfections.
looks great. This one I don't feel like I need to do the sharpening, but I'll do the blur because I just really love this effect, especially when it comes down to just professional pictures. Come over here. Do their different things. Hey, buddy. Why are you playing with daddy? It's so good. This picture is pretty great, so I'll save it. Again, changing it from a Photoshop version to a JPEG, which is the normal file that a picture is. Okay. We don't need to save it um, because we've already saved it to our desktop. And then I'll just click Photoshop and that is it. Alright, thanks. Bye.